All right. Now, I want everyone to take a few minutes and imagine being a 17-year-old high school basketball player named Joe, running down the court, dribbling your way for an uncontested layup, when all of a sudden, an opposing defender accidentally hits the back of your head with an elbow. Next thing you know, you're on the floor, looking up in a daze, trying to figure out what just happened. Now, you try to get up and walk it off, but something doesn't feel right. You see your teammates looking down at you, and you quickly glance over to the bench, and you see the athletic trainer for your team running on the court towards you. Now, as you guys can probably guess, this sounds a lot like a concussion. Now, I'm sure everyone here in the audience has heard of the term concussion, either had one yourself or know someone that did, or even seen it on TV with some of the major sports, ESPN, for example. Now, it is a hot topic, especially in recent years, with the increased awareness of possible long-term consequences of repetitive concussive hits in retired contact sport athletes. Now, there are estimated to be more than 3 million sports-related traumatic brain injuries in the United States alone, with the majority of them being concussions. First of all, what is a concussion? Well, the medical community defines it as an injury caused by a direct blow to the face, head, or neck, or anywhere else on the body that's fully transmitted back to the head. But this typically causes impairment in your neurologic function. But these usually resolve on their own. However, in some cases, signs and symptoms like headache, light photosensitivity, blurry vision, these things can progress and evolve, lasting from minutes to hours to even days. Now, the conventional method of treatment has always been to drink fluids, go home and rest, and to restrict any kind of physical or social activity that could bring about or worsen symptoms until essentially they go away on their own. But the problem with that is it could take a couple of days or a couple of months. I mean, nobody really knew much about it. This cocooning method, as we like to call it, was the standard of care for decades. Well, let's go back to our player, Joe. After his injury on the court, the athletic trainer worried about a concussion, and so he wanted him to see a doctor. Now, using this conventional method, the doctor would tell him to go home and sit in a dark room. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sure I'd like that. You have to, the patient will be told that he can't play basketball, he can't use his phone or his computer, and good luck telling a teenager that and he'd even have to refrain from hanging out with his friends. But yeah, that definitely sounds unpleasant, right? Now, this was based on previous research on animal experiments and observations of patients with concussions who had worsened symptoms whenever they tried to exert themselves physically or mentally. It was also found that getting a second head injury while the brain was already concussed could lead to some pretty grim consequences. So yeah, this treatment was conservative, but that added social isolation actually prolonged recovery. It did the opposite. It made patients feel worse. And here's the kicker. We never even knew when they fully recovered. But luckily now, we're transitioning to a more active method of treatment, using aerobic exercise. One of the goals of the sports medicine community is to help athletes return to play in a safe and effective manner. Now, during my sports medicine fellowship here at University at Buffalo, I had the pleasure of working with my friends and colleagues, Dr. John Letty and Dr. Mohamed Haider at UB's Concussion Management Clinic. And one of the objective findings that we see in these types of patients is that if they exerted themselves too hard, it actually worsened their symptoms. But there's a term for this. It's called exercise intolerance. It's the inability to exercise to your age-appropriate max. And now here in Buffalo, we're able to quantify this by putting concussed athletes and patients on a treadmill, or stationary bike before their symptoms get too bad, and we measure their heart rate the whole time. I participate in this novel approach using controlled aerobic exercise, using data from our Buffalo concussion treadmill test. Now, this is a validated test that measures how safe it is to perform aerobic exercise, sometimes as early as a day after concussion. So now you guys are probably wondering, how does this treatment plan even work? Well, let's re-examine our scenario back with our high school player, Joe. But this time, the coach pulls him out of the game to be evaluated. Now, me being the team physician for his high school, I get a phone call from the trainer 
who's worried about a concussion and wants him to be seen in the clinic. So I agree to bring him in. And I do a thorough history and physical exam. Now Joe tells me, Doc, I've got this headache and nausea that's coming and going, but it's not going away completely. What do I do? Well, one of the first two things I look at when I'm doing the physical is I look at the eyes and the neck. And I see that Joe is starting to get more and more symptomatic when I do certain maneuvers with him. So yeah, at this point, I agree with the trainer's concern. But instead of telling him to go home in a dark room, I'll ask him, hey bud, I want to see if you can walk on this treadmill test for me today, which will tell us the limit of your exercise tolerance and may also tell us how quickly you'll recover. But most importantly, this heart rate that we're going to calculate for you will help us tailor a safe exercise prescription therapy just for you. But we have to make sure you don't have any severe neck problems, balance issues, or lower body injury that could compromise your ability to walk on the treadmill. I mean, let's be real. We don't want someone with a broken foot walking on a treadmill, right? That just doesn't sound too good. But luckily for us, Joe doesn't have any of these problems. No pre-existing heart conditions, and his balance isn't severely affected. So at this point, being his sports med doc, it's my prerogative to show him exactly what we need him to do. Joe, we're going to measure your resting heart rate first. And then you're going to start walking on this treadmill until you begin to feel your symptoms coming about. And I'm going to measure your heart rate every minute and ask you how you're feeling as we go along. Pretty straightforward. So let's say Joe's running on this thing. He's feeling good for the first three to four minutes. But after that fourth minute, he tells me, Doc, my headache is coming back. And any time a patient tells me about a worsening symptom, I have to ask them if they want to either keep going or stop the test. And now in this instance, Joe says, no, I'm, I think I'm good. We're going to call it. OK. But before doing that, I'll get one last heart rate. And this heart rate, calculated at his symptom exacerbation, is called the heart rate threshold. And like I mentioned before, we'll use that to treat his uh, exercise prescription therapy. So Joe, your resting heart rate was 90 beats per minute. And you reached 150 on the treadmill before you had to stop. Now I want you to perform aerobic exercises, like walking or jogging, either outdoors or indoors, on a treadmill or stationary bike, at 90% of that heart rate threshold. So for you, simple math, but sometimes I have to use my calculator, 90% of 150 is 135 beats per minute. Now you can do a warm up, you can work up to it, and I want you to stay at that heart rate for 20 minutes every day if you can. Now, if your symptoms don't get worse from doing that, go ahead and increase the duration of that, but stay at that heart rate. However, if your symptoms do worsen, take a break for the day and just come back and do it the next day. So now you're probably wondering, what's next, right? Well, why even make Joe exercise? Well, I'm sure we can all agree that exercise has shown to improve quality of life by increasing your mood and your sleep. And previous research studies suggest that when you do exercise, certain chemicals are released that help the brain's neuroplasticity, the ability to repair and reorganize itself. Now, there have been many published research articles about treating concussions with mild to moderate aerobic activity. But I want to bring in particular one in, uh, one in particular that came out in the JAMA Pediatrics Journal earlier this February. It, it was basically assessing the effectiveness of aerobic exercise versus a placebo-like stretching program in adolescents with sports-related concussions. 103 people were randomized to these two groups, and they were matched for in multiple variables, including age, sex, initial symptom severity, exercise tolerance, and days since their head injury. And the interesting thing was, what they found in the aerobic group was that these guys, they felt like their symptoms recovered in 13 days, compared to those in the stretching group who felt they recovered in 17 days. Now, this carried a lot of significance statistically in the study. Now, you might be wondering, that's great, Doc, four days. What's the big deal about four days? But I want you guys to envision yourself in the mind of the athlete, right? What if you were a seasoned runner trying to make it into that marathon that meant something to you? Or if you were a senior high school basketball player like Joe, trying to play in his last home game of the season? Every day matters. And the beautiful thing is, this treatment can be applied to anyone who suffers from concussion, not just athletes. You could be a construction worker who happens to slip on the job, 
or simply walking outside your door to your car and you slip on ice. And I've seen that happen many times here in Buffalo, and we've treated patients with concussions just for that reason alone. It happens. Now, I want to reiterate that it has to be mild to moderate aerobic activity that doesn't worsen your symptoms. You start off with what you can do, and you gradually increase the intensity under direct supervision of a trained clinician. Because too much exercise has the opposite effect. You're stressing the brain for its ability to even tolerate it. Now, research is continuing every day in this field to help manage and treat concussions effectively. And with the help of my colleagues at the University at Buffalo, early but controlled sub-symptom aerobic exercise is helping athletes and patients of all kinds return to their baseline and resume a high quality of life. Thank you. <laughs>